I am Amit and today I am going to talk about something which is very hot right now in the tech industry is the metaverse. The metaverse is a collection of hundreds and thousands of virtual worlds, a 3D world which is persistent, spatial and where multiple users can coexist at the same time. It sounds like some sci-fi kind of concept because the metaverse is not, it goes beyond just having a 3D world or having your digital avatars or digital twin or having interaction in the environment. There are three essential components which I believe kind of defines the metaverse or going to define. First is the immersive experience. So when you look at these games, 3D games and different social networks, where there is a persistent, there is a shared environment, but why we are not calling the metaverse is because the immersive experience is not there. And when I say immersive experience, just imagine like if you are wearing a VR headset, I believe many of you must be knowing what the VR headset is. It's a virtual reality headset with which you wear it on your head and you, you are completely teleported into a different world. But the beauty of this technology is that it not only shows you that different world, but you can literally walk around inside that world and also have a depth perception which is missing in normal games, 3D games when you play it on your, your console or on your phones. Another thing is the spatial audio. When I say spatial is like in real life if somebody is standing behind me and he is calling my name, I would be able to detect, I would be able to direct, oh the voice is coming from that direction. So that kind of spatial audio is being supported in such environment. Also if we bring in the technology called haptic, it's again a brilliant technology where the, you can wear a wearable suit or some gears on your hands which makes you feel the breeze inside that virtual environment or for that matter if you are holding a hot object or a cold object, you can get those sensations. Those sensory perceptions can be created. So this immersive experience, these, these kind of experiences defines the metaverse which is way different from the other 3D worlds what we see or what we talk about. The another second essential component is the ownership or the governance. Now of late we have seen there are a lot of issues related to privacy, data. Like if we give an example, you go play a 3D game or go to any social network, the first thing is very obvious is about your avatar. It could be a 2D avatar, it could be a 3D avatar and if it's a 3D avatar you are way conscious about how do I look you know, my hairstyle, what I'm wearing. You put a lot of effort, you create these avatars. Even you buy some assets in games and a lot of stuff you do. But then these digital assets, you think you own it, you don't own it. So this is a very essential element of metaverse where you get the ownership of all those assets. So if you're creating your own digital twin or an avatar, you have the right to own it. And that is being enabled by the technology called Web 3.0, the blockchain. It's again one of the hottest words. What blockchain is, blockchain is a smart kind of smart contract where when you create any avatar or digital asset, Let's get recorded in this contract and written on blockchain. 
and nobody else in the world can tweak it, edit it, delete it. It can't be done. Only you have the right to do that. And it's not only limited to that. You can store this token or the contract called token into your digital wallet. And even there is another term called NFT. Law of talk about NFTs. This is what exactly the NFT is. So when you store your avatar in a form of token, it's called non-fungible token, the NFT. So you own the NFT of your avatar. If you create something, some creative asset in the virtual world, that can be stored in the form of NFT. So you're going to have all the rights pertaining to those assets. Even you have the liberty to trade it, to share it. So this again defines why metaverse is different. The third, the most important, when we talk of these virtual worlds, so obviously there are people who exist in those worlds. Obviously when people are there, they are interacting, collaborating. Obviously then there's bound to be some kind of transactions. And these transactions or trade would require some kind of currency. Mostly you might have seen those digital currency in the game, like you know, some tokens, some reward points. But then again, they are limited to that particular environment. Here, when we talk of these currency, these, we are talking about cryptos, the bitcoins, the other cryptocurrencies. What it does is, it gives you the freedom to own those currency without any permissions. It's very seamless and it will not be limited to that environment. So you can always store those cryptocurrencies into your digital wallet and you can take it out. You can go, in fact, some, some places you can literally buy lands, you can buy phys physical goods by using those cryptocurrencies. So these are these three essential elements which kind of differentiate or defines this metaverse, why it is different from the other virtual worlds you see. Now, let's talk about when we see there is so much potential of metaverse, do we see that when it is being used for fashion industry from gaming to real estate to banking. All big brands are going after it and they are seeing good, amazing results. And in fact, last couple of years were pretty bad. Like we all were undergoing this pandemic and particularly the education industry suffered a lot. I mean, no one ever thought that you know, everybody would be sitting at home and there would be challenge of, you know, continuity of teaching, education. So everybody during this period relied on technology. Like the conference calls, Zoom, Microsoft Meet, a lot of other tools, other platforms. They were part of day-to-day -day life. Educational apps, online conferencing videos or video sessions taken by educators, teachers. So everybody was leveraging this technology to ensure that continuity is there. Otherwise, these two years would have been lost. And it was a big loss. However, there was a downside of it. I know I've been talking to a lot of students right now also. I was just speaking with a few students. The experience was mixed. To an extent, it was good that the continuity was there, but end of the day, it didn't give them a feel-good kind of experience where they really wanted to continue that kind of... Everybody was, uh, was looking forward to come back to schools, colleges, universities. Because 
the factor was the collaboration, the communication, the social element of it that was missing in all those platforms. And that's where I see this metaverse can play a big role in filling that gap. When I talk of this immersive experience, we are going to look at it, how this experience is going to add value building a knowledge verse, a kind of metaverse for education. Brookings published a white paper and they talked about there are six C's, the fundamentals for learning and education. These six C's, the first one was collaboration. The collaboration is essential for any student or any learner because he can't coexist in isolation. He has to go out, he has to collaborate with people. He should have that skill. He has to collaborate with teachers, educators to acquire knowledge. So there has to be a platform which gives that opportunity. The platform like virtual reality or mixed reality gives an opportunity for people to coexist in a virtual environment. The educators, the teachers, the students, they can collaborate, they can talk to each other. And it's not limited to a specific geographical boundary because they can interact any, any person anywhere in the world. So there's a big opportunity for collaboration. Another thing is the communication. Communication is also very important. I mean, apart from just normal language or what we speak, communication is also about the body language, how you present yourself, how articulate you are in conveying your thoughts. And also, how often you are meeting different kind of different set of people so that you go out of your comf comfort zone and understand how effectively you can communicate with different sets of people. So this immersive technology gives that the privilege of interacting with people. And also it's not just mere interaction by looking at some kind of video screen, but rather having interacting with the digital avatar, where you can sit, communicate, talk, share ideas. The third C is the content. And content is very, very important, right? Anything to do with in education is all about content. Content is not just about any particular subject. Because when we talk about any subject, like in this engineering or the, the IITs, like you, you pick up a particular degree or branch, you're talking or studying about that specific subject. But how about, or they, you have many subjects in a particular branch. But how about if you can have a cross understanding of concepts? When the fourth is the critical thinking. I mean, it's one of the most important skill. I mean, for today as well as the future generation. Because whatever we learn, whatever knowledge we acquire, it's very important how do we apply back into our real life. Are we able to probe a particular situation properly? Are we able to make informed decisions? So this is all driven by what knowledge you acquire and how smartly you make those decisions. Are you able to ask right questions about certain situation? And that's where this critical thinking is very, very essential. In this immersive environment, it's like a virtual world where you can create all these such kind of simulations, simulations of real life situations and student can, in fact, experience those and check out their ability, their knowledge, how effectively they are able to handle those situations. The fifth one is the creative innovation. Now, creative innovation is about pushing your boundaries in terms of innovation happen when you are able to push your boundaries 
but that happens only when you have a deep knowledge or understanding of the subject nobody you won't find anybody who can be an you know, innovator without having any understanding of the subject so concept has to be very clear in his mind and this immersive technology where the visualization is there the rich content is there the person is able to understand concepts very well and not only understand but also by collaborating he is able to push his thinking think out of the box those kind of activities he can perform and that will lead to innovation and last is the confidence how do you get the confidence so if you are able to get the expertise in the above five c's obviously the confidence comes this confidence is required in each and every step of life whether you are at workplace whether you are in college whether you are in schools whether you are going anywhere else confidence is very much required an educated person would have better confidence as compared to an uneducated person so we see that how this immersive technology follows the similar principles and enable a very effective education if it put to right use i personally believe that the knowledge verse can be created wherein the technology like vr ar mixed reality can be used and leveraged to transform the education this is going to transform the education for sure thank you